Time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The King Cobra Murder Case. Many sufferers from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia are amazed when they try Anison for the first time. Anison is a fast, modern, effective way to relieve such pain. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Anison brings incredibly fast relief. Your own dentist or physician may have given you an envelope containing Anison tablets on one of your recent visits. If you haven't already been introduced to Anison this way, try it the next time you suffer sudden headache, neuritis, or neuralgic pain. You'll be delighted with the results. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Ask for Anison, spelled A-N-A-C-I-N, at your drug counter today. Now for Mr. Keene and the King Cobra murder case. Our scene opens aboard an ocean liner which is just entering New York Harbor. And one of the cabins, a beautiful young girl has just completed her packing in preparation for going ashore. Suddenly, her door is open. She's expecting to see one of the cabin stewards. Instead, she comes face to face with death. Stewards, will you take this bad case and... Oh, I thought you were the steward. I... What are you holding under that towel? A snake. Oh, for heaven's sake, take it away. That's a cobra. It's a deadly snake. Are you crazy? No. No. Oh, let me. Let me out of here. Let go of me. I'll die. I've been poisoned. If you have any pity at all, you'll get a doctor. Why? Why, you want to kill me? Yes, miss. Can I help you? Are uh, you Mr. Keene? I'm Mike Clancy, Mr. Keene's partner. Oh. Oh, here's Mr. Keene coming out of his private office now. This young lady want to see me, Mike? Yes, I do, Mr. Keene. My name is Alice Walker. Yes? I've come to ask you for help. Something dreadful happened yesterday aboard an incoming ocean liner. It's so fantastic, I can hardly believe it myself, but I know it was murder. What was murder, Miss Walker? My sister, Doris, was bitten by a king cobra snake. She died at the point. They say it was an accident, but I know it wasn't. Saints preserve us. Your sister was bitten by a cobra? Just sure a moment, Mike. Miss Walker, please sit down and try to tell your story as calmly as possible. I'll do my best, Mr. King. About six months ago, my sister Doris met a young man named Frank Percy. Mm -hmm. He seemed to fall in love with her. He asked her to marry him. But Doris refused. Frank gradually became difficult about it and tried to make my sister change her mind, but he didn't get very far. Yes, go on. After a while, Frank became almost abusive. He followed Doris around and tried to make trouble for her. That was when she decided to go to Europe for a few months, hoping Frank would forget about it. And did he, Miss Walker? On the contrary, Mr. Keene. He followed Doris to Europe. But in England, she met another young man, Bill Dow. And they became engaged. And Doris was very happy. This was about six weeks ago. I decided to take a trip to England myself because I imagined my sister would be getting married there. Is Mr. Darrow British? Uh, no, Bill's an American. But a few weeks after I arrived in England, Bill's firm decided to transfer him back here to the United States, and Bill and Doris thought they'd get married here at home. I see. So all three of us sailed on the steamship Warwick. And when we were 
Two days at sea, I discovered that Frank Percy had also taken passage on the same boat. Well, he's the fellow that was in love with your sister and made a pest of himself? Yes, Mr. Cassidy. But, as a matter of fact, he didn't bother Doris at all. Until the last few hours that we were at sea. And what happened then? I was out of the cabin I shared with Doris. When I came back, I found her on the floor, dead. And coiled in a corner was a king cobra snake. Saint Preservus, how did a deadly poisonous snake like that get aboard ship? The ship we boarded at Southampton, Mr. Clancy, just come from India. They were bringing a shipment of poisonous snakes to a zoo in the United States. And one of the snakes got loose? That's the way it seemed, Mr. Keene. The ship's doctor said my sister Doris had died of its bite. Well, the king cobra is one of the deadliest of snakes, Miss Walker. Its venom can kill in a matter of minutes, or even seconds. The snake was lying near a ventilator, and the ship's engineer said it could have crawled up through there into the cabin. By accident, Miss Walker? That's what they thought. But no one was able to explain the bucket of ice in the cabin. Ice? Yes, Mr. Keene. There was a champagne bucket full of ice in our cabin room when I found the snake in Doris's body. And neither Doris nor I ever drank any wine. Hmm. I see what you mean, Miss Walker. What do you make of that, boss? Mike, it's well known that a snake becomes numb and powerless when it's exposed to ice or cold. Yes, Mr. Keene. And Frank Percy could have stolen the snake using heavy leather gloves to protect himself, then placed it in the ice bucket. And then? He could have carried it to our cabin. And when it became warm again, and dangerous, he could have let it bite my sister Doris. But what makes you so sure it was Frank Percy who did that? Because Frank used to be a laboratory technician. He knows how to handle snakes, Mr. Keene. We did research work on antidotes for poison. Did you say we, Miss? Yes, Mr. Clancy. I was in that type of work myself. That's where I met Frank and later introduced him to my sister Doris. Well, Miss Walker... Did you find any other evidence that your sister's death was murder and not just a fantastic accident? Not on board the boat, Mr. King. The ship's authority said my theory of murder just didn't make any sense. Yes, you need more evidence to make a murder case. Well, I have more, Mr. King. Here's a note I found in Doris's suitcase after I went ashore and went through her things at home. That note is signed by Frank Percy. So I see Doris, I won't let you go. Either you forget that man, Darrow, and marry me, or I'll kill both of us. Isn't that proof enough, Mr. Keene, that Frank Percy murdered my sister? He didn't. He wrote this to her on board ship. It's on the ship's stationery. And it's certainly evidence that your sister's life was in danger. Will you take the case, Mr. Keene? Doris was all I had in the world. No two sisters were ever closer. I'll do what I can to fight out the truth, Miss Walker. Thank you, Mr. King. Here, put your address on this sheet of paper. I also want to know where to get in touch with Frank Percy and Bill Darrow. Oh, Bill is stopping at the Hotel Meadows, Mr. King. He's heartbroken. He's been ill ever since he left the ship. Frank Percy has disappeared, as far as I know. But I've brought a picture of him, Mr. King. Yes, here it is. Very well. We'll send out an alarm for him. Meanwhile, we'll talk to Bill Darrow. This case is an extraordinary one, Miss Walker. Won't be easy to solve. But you will hear from me shortly, I hope. Very well, Mr. Keene. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Walker. Goodbye, Mr. Clancy. So long. Poisonous snake and a jealous lover. Hmm. That's quite a combination, Mike. Well, I was just thinking of something else, Mr. Keene. A poisonous snake and a jealous sister. Alice Walker admitted she also knew a bit about snakes. Yes, and look at this picture of Frank Percy she gave us. It's autographed. With love to Alice. Sure, and I spotted that myself, boss. Perhaps we have more suspects in this case than Alice Walker realizes. At any rate, we'll ask the police to send out an alarm for the missing suspect, Frank Percy. And meanwhile, we'll get Bill Darrow's version of the case. <laughs> Hotel suite, Mr. Keene. 811. According to the desk clerk, Bill Darrow's been confined to his bed since he checked in, Mike. I wonder if he's able to answer his door. I think I hear someone coming, boss. Yes? We'd like to see Mr. Darrow, please. 
He's not feeling very well. May I ask who's calling? Mr. Key and Mr. Clancy. The private investigators. Oh, please come in. Thank you. My name is Edna Hunter. I'm a close friend of Bill's family. Please come into the bedroom. Bill is sitting up now. Bill, my dear, Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, is here to see you. How do you do, Mr. Keene? How do you do? This is my partner, Mike Clancy. Pleased to meet you. Sit down, gentlemen. I've been ill, as you see. My fiance, Doris Walker's death, was too great a shock for me. Bill... I'm expecting an important phone call in my own room downstairs. But I'll return in an hour or so. Thanks for everything, Aunt Edna. Oh, it's been nothing at all. Mr. Keene, will you excuse me? Of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Edna. Thanks again. Goodbye. So long. Miss Hunter, is your aunt, Mr. Darrell? Well, not really, Mr. Keene, but she's just as close as an aunt would be. She's been swelled to me. The doctor said it was nervous shock that I'd be all right. But frankly, I I don't think I'll ever recover from Doris' death. I have a feeling you know why we've come here, Bill, if I may call you that. Yes, Mr. Keene. Doris's sister, Alice, must have told you about her murder field. Yes. Well, I agree with her. Frank Percy is a pathological case in a minute. And you also believe he plotted Doris Walker's death? I know how fantastic Alice's story sounds. But it makes sense when you remember what kind of a man Frank Percy is. I'd like you to describe him to me. Um, There's some of your door, isn't it, Bill? Yes, the door to the living room. I'm afraid I can't. Well, here, let me answer it for you. Please do that, Mike. Is this Bill Darrow, sweet? Yes. Where is he? Just a second, young fella. You look familiar to me. Do I? I think I've seen your picture. Listen, you must be Frank Percy, the man we're looking for. Stand back or I'll put a bullet through your head. Oh, arm to the teeth, are you? Stand back, you hear? I'll kill Bill Darrow if it's the last thing I do. Mike, what's happened? Look out, Mr. Keene. Uh, oh, I'll take that gun, young fella. Is it Frank Percy, Mike? Yes, boss. Coming in here with a gun and threatening to murder Bill Darrow. If it wasn't for Darrow, Doris Walker would be alive now. We were thinking she'd be alive if it wasn't for you, Frank Percy. But me? You've got quite a bit of explaining to do. I suggest you better start now, because I promised to put Doris Walker's killer behind bars. And you will have to prove to my satisfaction that the killer isn't you. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the King Cobra murder case. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Tylenol toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now, Tylenol gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. What more foamy, refreshing colonos brightens teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Help stop tooth decay. Get colonos toothpaste with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the King Cobra murder case. Lovely young Doris Walker has been murdered aboard an incoming ocean liner by means of a poisonous snake. And Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are now trying to solve this most extraordinary case. Among the suspects is Frank Percy, a young man who was jilted by the victim in favor of Bill Darrow, with whom Doris fell in love. Now Frank Percy has been captured by Mike after an unsuccessful attempt to kill his ex-rival, Bill Darrow. And in the living room of Darrow's hotel suite, Mike is saying to Mr. Keene, Boss, before you start to question this fellow Frank Percy, i better put a pair of handcuffs on him so he won't start any more funny business. Well, Percy, what do you have to say to yourself? You're already under suspicion for the murder of Doris Walker. Now you've added an attempt to murder her fiancé, Bill Darrow, who's lying ill in the next room. I didn't kill Doris. I loved her, I tell you. 
What about the second note you sent her? That was just a bluff, Mr. Keene. I, I thought it might make her change her mind about marrying Bill Darrow. Sure, you need a better excuse than that. Percy, I understand you have quite a knowledge of poisonous snakes and how to handle them. Oh, what about it? I, I'm not the only one who ever worked as a laboratory technician on snake poison. No. You were aboard that ocean liner when someone exposed Doris Walker to the fangs of the deadly King Cobra snake. Her sister Alice was there, too. And Alice knows as much about snakes as I do. She worked with me in that laboratory. What was your relationship with Alice Walker? Alice thought I'd marry her one day. But it was a sister Doris I really loved. Maybe Alice tried to get even. Maybe, maybe she murdered her sister because she was jealous. There's someone at the door. Answer it, will you, Mike? Okay, Mr. Kane, sir. There's no one here. It must have been a bellboy, Mr. Keene. He left the afternoon papers here in the hall. Well, I think we'd better turn Frank Percy over to the police, Mike. No. What about Darrow? Maybe he murdered Doris. Bill Darrow had no apparent reason to murder his fiancée. But you did, Percy. You came here to his hotel police because of jealousy. Not because you thought he was guilty of murder. And furthermore... Mr. Look at this article on the front page of this newspaper. What is it, Mike? Well, it says here that the New York police are... On the lookout for a maniac who came in on the last sailing of the steamship Warwick. That's the boat Doris Walker was on when she was murdered. Let's see that newspaper, Mike. Hmm. Was this police cable that the homicidal maniac was responsible for the deaths of two young women in England? It's been sought for over six months. The steamship Warwick under an assumed name. But, Mr. Keene, look at the description of the fellow they want. About 30, blonde hair, blue eyes, 160 pounds, high feet, 10 inches tall, and a small scar over his left eye. That's the key. That could be a complete description. Yes, it could be, Mr. Percy. Boss, maybe we'd better question Darrow. Not yet, Mike. I want to make sure before we accuse him. Uh, you stay here with Frank Percy until I return. Well, where are you going, Mr. Key? Downstairs in the hotel to Edna Hunter's room. She's an old friend of Bill Darrow's. And I have a feeling that she can tell us more about him than anyone else. Mr. King. I took the liberty of coming to your room, Miss Hunter, because something unforeseen has come up. Oh, please come in. Oh, before I begin, I... Found these letters outside your door. Well, boy, he just delivered the mail, I imagine. Thank you, Mr. King. Now, what is it you wanted to talk to me about? Miss Hunter, look at the headline in this newspaper. You mean the story about the escape maniac? Yes. You've read it? Just now, Mr. King. The description of the insane man the British police are after tallies with that of Bill Darrow. I was wondering if you'd think of that, so I just put through a transatlantic phone call to England. The operator told me the call would come through in about half an hour. Oh? Hey. Bill is not the man you have to in England, Mr. King. I'll stake my life on it. And when the phone call comes through from the British police, I think I can prove it to you. You're absolutely sure he's innocent, Miss Hunter? Oh, yes. I've known him for several years, and I knew his late mother as well. Why, Bill couldn't possibly be the insane murderer they're after. Miss Hunter, would you know if he had any knowledge of snakes? Snakes? Of course not. Well, he doesn't know any more about the horrid creatures than I do. I've been Bill's closest friend ever since his mother's death, Mr. King. I know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Were you in England with Bill Darrow during the past few months? No. I've never been in England in my life. My home is in California. When I found out about Bill's engagement to Doris Walker, I came here to New York to attend the wedding. Well, when the overseas phone call comes through, Miss Hunter, let me know the results. I'll be upstairs in Bill Darrow's suite. I'll come right up just as soon as I hear from you, Mr. King. Please, you don't know Bill the way I do. How can I convince you that he couldn't possibly have murdered his fiancée, Doris Walker? Perhaps you already have convinced me, Miss Hunter. Mike, I want you to take Frank Percy to police headquarters. And then join me here in Bill Darrow's hotel suite. Well, did you find out anything about Darrow from Edna Hunter, boss? She's putting through a long-distance call to the British police. Meanwhile, I'm going to put through an overseas call myself to the Liverpool Zoological Society. And if they give me the information I'm looking for, 
We'll have this murder case broken within the next few hours. Miss King. I see you've left your bed and... Rest yourself, Bill. Are you feeling better? Yes, Mr. Keene. I, I feel a little better. My partner, Mike Clancy, took Frank Percy to police headquarters a little while ago. And the case is solved. He murdered Barry Sheffer. You're not sure, Bill. Quite possible Frank Percy didn't murder Barry Sheffer. What do you mean? I, I thought perhaps you don't realize there may be evidence that you committed the murder. Oh, no. You want to help me put the killer behind bars? Of course, Mr. Keene. Then do exactly as I say. In a very few moments, Edna Hunter will be up here. And this is what I want you to tell her. Come in. Bill! Bill, is Mr. Keene here? He just left, Anna. You're in the clear. I just talked by transatlantic phone to the British police. They made a mistake. The maniac they were searching for never took passage on the steamship Warwick. He was killed about an hour ago in Southampton. Maniac? What maniac? Oh, it doesn't matter. I guess Mr. Keene hasn't paid. Anyways, you're in the clear, Bill. They can't suspect you of Doris's murder. Aunt Edna, I have some news for you. Bill, don't call me Aunt Edna. It makes me feel rather old. After all, I'm only 40 and... Well, not too much older than you are. You say I'm not your aunt. But uh, what is this news you have? I'm going to marry Doris's sister, Alice Walker. Your what? If you want to know the truth, I was never really in love with Doris. Actually, I was mad about Alice, but I'd already told Doris I'd marry her, and I didn't have the nerve to back down. How can you be such a fool? What? Alice is just as much of a nitwit as her sister Doris was. What's wrong with you, dear? Are you stupid enough to fall for every woman in the world? But the one who really adores you. I I don't understand. Bill, Bill, I'm still an attractive woman. There are only ten years between us, ten small years. And I know how to make you happy. But this is ridiculous, Aunt Edna. If you call me Aunt Edna again, I'll kill you. You what? I'll never let you go, do you hear? You belong to me. I go, and I can... What did you say? Well, Edna Hunter. Mr. Keene. You just admitted, as I expected you would, that you murdered Doris Walker. You are hiding in that closet. Don't come near me, either of you. She's got a gun, Mr. Keene. It won't help you, Edna Hunter. It's too late. You gave yourself away on two counts. Even before I planned with Bill how to trick you into confessing. Do you remember those letters I found outside your door a while ago? Yes. I remember, Keen. I noticed that the return address on one of them was the Liverpool Zoological Society. When I phoned them overseas, they said you had often acted as an agent for them for reptiles. Your business was supplying snakes for zoological gardens. But you denied that you'd ever been to England. You wouldn't have lied like that if you hadn't wanted to cover for yourself. And what else did you discover, Keen? You were so anxious to protect Bill Darrow. I suspected that she who might be madly in love with you. So much in love that you'd murder your rival, Doris Walker. And you did. Mr. Keene, I never even knew that Edna was on that boat. Bill, that was because she was quartered near the hold with some of her snakes. Edna Hunter had boarded the boat in India with a shipment of snakes for New York. Later, by coincidence, you boarded that same boat with your fiancé, Doris. And Edna kept well out of sight. I would have killed Doris sooner if I'd had a chance. I would have pushed her overboard. But your snakes gave you a better opportunity. You took a king cobra, numbed it with ice, then exposed Doris Walker to its deadly bite, thinking her death would look like an accident. Mr. Keene, I never even knew that Edna's profession was dealing with snakes. You never knew anything about me, Bill Darrow, because you never took the trouble to find out. I fell madly in love with you the first time I saw you, and I took a position with your mother just to be near you. And Edna... You never got over your love of him. It walked and twisted your mind. So that when you saw him again, engaged to another younger girl, you went to pieces completely. No, Keen. I didn't go to pieces. And I'm still in command of the situation now. She's moving to the door, Miss Keene. And before I go, 
I'm going to square accounts with both of you. Put that gun down. Let go of me. Hold on, Mike. Let go. may be pretty good with snakes, boss, but so am I, especially the two-legged kind. Go. Call the police, Bill. You tell them to get up here immediately. All right, Mr. King. As for you, Edna Hunter, your crime is one of the most horrible I've ever encountered. When you're brought to justice, you'll pay for it with your life. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the King Cobra murder. Next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anacin. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anacin is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anacin is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anacin contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anacin tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. The most effective relief used only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30. And economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. This is National Care Week. There is urgent need for care packages in the free section of Berlin. $10 or even $5.50 care packages are needed for the hungry in West or free Berlin. These free Berliners must have American help if they are to survive. Remember, food wins friends for freedom. Contact CARE today. Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keen. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Dan Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Cleek. Directed by Richard Leonard. Leonard Kilpack plays Mr. Keen. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keen next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of murder and the missing car. Suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion? Safe new Bicidol mint, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown up feeling. Give longer lasting release in baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acid. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief anywhere, anytime. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmaco Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.